So, what's the secret to shooting professional looking gimbal moves? How do you capture smooth cinematic camera movement that makes your video stand out? Well, that is exactly what I'm gonna be showing you how to do today. It's coming up. Hey everyone, Steve here from Learn Online Video, and today I'm at this unbelievably epic location here in the southwest of England, where I'm gonna be sharing five simple tricks and techniques to help you achieve cinematic Hollywood-style camera movement. A big thanks to Zhuin for sponsoring this video and for sending out the all-new Weeble 3S. This is a great gimbal for these types of shots, but as always, all gear used in this video will be linked in the description below. Okay, let's jump straight into this video with tip number one, camera movement. Now, the aim of the game here is to capture smooth, professional looking shots. Whether it's a smooth slider shot or a dramatic crane movement, mastering camera movements is crucial and can really help take your footage to the next level. So let's use a simple tracking shot as an example. We're gonna place our subject in the center of frame and as our subject moves, we're going to maintain a consistent distance and framing throughout our shot. This is gonna help create a smoother, much steadier camera movement. Hold your gimbal with two hands. The more points of contact you have on your gimbal, the smoother your shots will be. Walk with your knees slightly bent and try to reduce your impact on the ground as much as possible. Failing to do this will result in a nasty up and down camera movement and this definitely is not what we want. Also, remember, you don't always need to be walking to achieve smooth camera movement. Take this shot here, for example, an orbit shot with the camera moving from left to right. If I do this by walking, the shot feels too fast and clunky. But if I do the exact same movement, only this time just moving my arms and upper body, we get a much smoother camera camera movement. Now, I know it's tempting when you pick up a gimbal, you just want to run around with it, but sometimes it's best just to rein it back a little bit, take it a little bit slower, and really focus on capturing a smoother camera movement, traveling less distance. Also, don't forget to keep an eye on your background when capturing these shots. Get creative with your gimbal moves and make your background spin. An orbit or parallax movement is great for this and can really help elevate the visual impact of your shots. Framing and composition. Framing and composition is essential in film making because it helps guide the audience's attention within the frame. You could, for example, use the rule of thirds. You could frame your shot so that it's nice and symmetrical. You could use leading lines, try using elements within your environment to help guide the viewer's eye to your subject or focal point. Also, try to keep an aesthetically pleasing shot throughout your camera movement. You could, for example, start your shot using a combination of the rule of thirds and leading lines. Then, as the camera pushes forward, start to move your subject into the center of frame creating a much more dynamic shot. Sometimes your framing and composition will be easy. Just put your subject in the center of frame and keep them there. Other times it will require a bit more practice and skill. Framing and composition is by far the best free way to improve the look of your films and videos because it doesn't matter what camera you're using, it doesn't matter what gimbal you're using, the same rules apply. I have an entire video dedicated to framing and composition. I will link it in the cards as well as in the description below. Okay, let's talk about focal lengths and what difference they make to your shots. Let's start with a shot at 16 millimeters, a nice wide field of view. We can see all of our subject and lots of the environment. Compared to a shot, say, at 35 millimeter, which is much more zoomed in, our subject now fills the frame more, we have a shallower depth of field, and our shot looks much more cinematic. The focal length of your lens directly affects the amount of background that you can see in your shot. The wider the focal length, the more of the background you will see. The tighter the focal length, the less of the background you will see. This effect is particularly useful when aiming to achieve that blurry background look. Shoot wide and everything will be in focus. Shoot tight and you'll separate your subject from the background and create much more depth to your shot. On a sunny day like today, however, you're going to need an ND filter to achieve this look because you're going to want to have your aperture as low as possible. I'm using a variable ND which allows me to adjust the strength of the ND so that I can expose my shot using this tiny lever instead of going into my camera settings, so extremely useful. Now, if you're still struggling to get nice, smooth camera movement, then it might be that you're simply using the wrong gimbal mode. Let's cover the three most common gimbal modes, what they do, and when to use them. Lock mode. Now, this mode comes in useful if ever you're looking to lock your camera facing a particular direction. See, it doesn't matter which way I try and turn the gimbal, left, right, up, or down, the camera remains locked facing that direction. This comes in really useful for tracking a moving subject, for example. By locking the pan axis, 
axis, the camera will remain in a fixed position, so you don't need to worry about it accidentally panning to the left or the right. It's also great for establishing shots of a location, pushing forward, pulling back, any movement where you want your camera to remain facing a fixed position. Okay, let's talk about pan follow mode. In this mode, the camera will follow any panning movements of the gimbal. So if I pan the gimbal to the right, the camera will follow. If I pan to the left, the camera will follow. But if I try and point up or down, the camera remains level on the tilt and roll axis. I find this mode comes in really useful for the orbit or parallax shots, as it allows you to maintain a consistent framing of your subject while the gimbal compensates for any side-to-side -side movements you might make. By activating pan follow mode, you can achieve professional looking shots with smooth and stable panning motions. It helps eliminate shaky footage and ensures that your subject stays in focus and centered. Follow mode. In follow mode, no matter which way you point your gimbal, the camera will follow. So if I pan to the right, the camera will follow. If I tilt up or tilt down, the camera will follow. This mode's particularly useful for capturing dynamic shots or any time you want your camera movement to mimic your gimbal. So pay close attention to what gimbal mode you're using and choose the right one for whatever shot you're looking to capture. Camera angles. Capturing a good mix of camera angles in filmmaking is crucial because it adds more visual interest as well as keep your audience engaged. But the most common way to shoot using a gimbal is here at eye level, so remember to mix things up. Different camera angles provide unique perspectives, resulting in a a much more immersive viewing experience. This gimbal has an extendable sling grip, for example, so I'm gonna use it to get my camera as low as I can to the ground, adding a completely new perspective to these shots. Try getting your camera high off the ground. For this, I attached my gimbal to a monopod, mimicking a Hollywood-style crane movement. Now, nothing wrong with shooting up here at eye level, but just remember to capture other camera angles to complement those shots. This will make your edits much more interesting. Now, if you're still struggling to capture nice smooth camera movement, then try shooting in slow motion. By slowing your footage down, you can instantly achieve a smoother appearance and eliminate any unwanted shake. This simple technique greatly enhances the visual quality of your shots, making them much more appealing to the viewer. Slowing down your footage not only enhances camera movement, but also enables your audience to take in more information and appreciate the moment more. By slowing down the pace, you can completely transform the mood and the atmosphere. A fast-paced shot with upbeat music feels distinctly different to a slow-motion shot accompanied by a orchestral music. Adjusting the speed not only gives you a wider range of shots, but also allows you to evoke a wider range of emotions, enhancing the overall impact of your visuals. Now remember, practice makes perfect with this, so grab your gimbal and start experimenting with these techniques. I will link the Weeble 3S below, as well as any other gear used in this video. And if you'd like to learn more about how to capture smooth, cinematic gimbal moves, then be sure to check out this video here, where I break down the top 10 gimbal moves to make anyone look epic. But that's it from me. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.